Welcome back to Ben's Garage. As you can see behind me on the wall, the inverter is installed. Also got the, the DC disconnect and the little breaker with the surge protector on the wall. Now, it was going to go on that wall, but the inverter needs 20 centimetres either side of it because it draws air in from the bottom and blows it out at the top. So it needs 20 centimetres to disperse the heat. Now, over on that wall, I'll show you in a minute. If I took the inverter 20 centimetres away from the wall where the original distribution board is, it would get quite close to where the Hobbit is going to be putting some curtains. So that's not ideal. So I was like, oh, we're a bit limited. And this is only temporary because eventually we want to get a power shed outside. All the inverters can go out there in an insulated shed. Um, and we'll just be running the fat cables in for the um, the distribution boards indoors. But this is temporary setup, so I've mounted it on this wall. We're just going to run some cabling over the door frame, over to that side. We'll have the distribution board that side, all the solar stuff this side, and um, yeah. So I mounted all that yesterday. The inverter is quite heavy. That's 12 kilos, but that's a good solid wall. I've managed to get some good raw plugs and some decent screws in there. That's not coming off that wall. Um, that was the tr that was the hardest bit because the other boxes down here they're all plastic so uh, that was quite easy and straightforward got them leveled up fixed on the wall lovely jubbly today i'm gonna wire up from the disconnect into the breaker and the surge protector and that box up into the inverter or i might do it backwards but uh, that's the plan for today but uh, so i shall crack on and show you sort of what we do see you over here
So that's it for this week's little instalment. I'm going to be fitting the distribution board on that wall at some point. So for here, I've tested it all. The circuit breaker's working, the disconnect's working. Obviously I've not got the PV panels wired in yet because we've not got them set up. Uh, I have still got to run a ground from that side over to this side for the um, surge protector. So I've gone from the disconnect into the breaker, out of the breaker at the where it goes in, into the surge protector, and then the other side of the breaker comes out and goes up to the inverter. I think that's correct. That's how I've seen it doing research and bits and pieces. If I've done it wrong, as I've said before, I'm still learning. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think, but I'm pretty sure that's the way that I've done it. Um, yeah, so into the breaker at the at the bottom and I've come out at where they've gone in, I've come out up to the surge protector, other side of the breaker comes out up to the inverter. I don't know if you'll be able to see that from uh, what I was messing about with in there. Um, but as I say, that's got to go to ground. So I'll have to run a, a ground cable over the door to that side, that's where the ground is. Uh, and then I need to run some big fat AC cables over the door, two of those, one from the grid into the inverter, one from the inverter to our new distribution board for our solar power. And then we get the PV panels all set up outside. We're good to rock and roll. Um, yeah, hopefully it's going to save us a little bit on our electric bills. It would be nice to get to a point where we could go off grid. Whether that's going to be possible or not, we don't know. We have been talking about it. Um, five kilowatts is not enough for our house. Uh, we're on 12 kilowatts um, coming in from the grid. So we could probably do with 10, but with the beauty of these inverters, you can wire the, you can get another inverter and run them in parallel, so you'll get 10 kilowatts. You can run them both off the same battery bank, but you'll have to have a different solar array for the second inverter. That's all an option. Um, we was doing some sums last night. This setup, once we've got batteries in the stand, we're looking at just over 4,000 euros installing it all ourselves. Going on our electric bills, we're paying just over a thousand euros a year for our electric, so that would take us four years to pay that off. Um, if we doubled the system, went for 10 kilowatts with two inverters, two lots of um, solar panels, and a couple more batteries, so that would give us four lithium batteries. Uh, you're looking at just over eight thousand, that would take us eight years to pay. The solar panels are guaranteed 25 to 30 years. The the lithium batteries that I'm looking at, um, they call it 6000 DOD, which is obviously discharging your battery and charging it back up 6,000 times. Now, if you used to do that every day, that's just over 16 years. So potentially those batteries could last for 16 years. Um, obviously, the older they get, the less sort of charge they hold. It's just sort of things we're looking into. You know, we if we could pay off, it say say the batteries last for 16, 15, 16 years, the solar panels 25 to 30 years, and even then they still work. They're just, um, they guarantee the output for 25 years, and they guarantee it to be uh, 80 something percent where where's when they're new they're about 93 percent i think um and they guarantee that in 25 years time that will still be putting out 80 i think it's about 85 percent of you know efficient um so we could have the whole if we went 10 kilowatts we could have the whole system paid off well we pay it off straight away but what we're paying in electric now so you know, you get what I'm saying. We're paying a thousand euros a year. That would take us eight years to sort of break even. After the eight years, we're plain sailing. It's free electric. Um, now, hopefully, the Hobbit and myself both have enough life left in us <laughs> to see the benefit. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I've already had a bit of a close call, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that is that. That's possibly the plan, and then we, can, you know, if we can get a, a system set up, ten kilowatts, and that's going to be enough. Uh, we might do that and go off grid. 
um, ditch EDF altogether because we had power cut the other night, you know. It only flipped the trip. We switched ours back on. I don't think the neighbours realised what had happened because they switched. That they were still in darkness. You, if you see what I'm saying, you know, it won't take us eight years to pay it off, but it'll take us eight years to see the benefits because obviously we'd have paid out all that sort of money. Now a lot of people have been getting grid tied. I mean, we was quoted thirteen grand. My cousin had to chat round. Uh, they was quoted fifteen grand. Um, but they're crafty, they won't put a lot of panels on your roof. Um, so you're still sort of relying on, on the grid. Um, I think this is the best way, do it yourself. Uh, obviously there are companies that can come and do it, but it's just gonna cost fortunes. If you can do it yourself, it's best to do it yourself, isn't it? So that's the plan. Um, we're just mulling over ideas at the minute. Let us know what you think. Um, I mean, electric, it is cheap, really. But they're charging us 15 euros a month just for the privilege of having electric. So we're 15 euros before we've even switched anything on. And, you know, the Hobbit likes prepping. So she preps all her cans, all her food and this, that and the other. She does like prepping for scenarios like shit hitting the fan. But um, we're more interested at the moment in money that we can save uh, and green energy. You know, we can produce our own energy out in the garden. So that's the plan. So let us know if you see any mistakes on the wall and uh, what you think of our little system. And should we go bigger? Should we go off grid? And uh, hopefully we'll have some Range Rover content coming along soon. I've got some videos to do. So hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.